Hello everyone. In this presentation, we're going to look at a .NET hang analysis. In the last presentation, we have looked at a crash analysis. In this case, uh, we're going to look at a hang. So this is the agenda of the presentation. So we're going to look at a hang application and we're going to collect the dump of that application. We're going to see the working of uh, the hang and the deadlock. And then we can uh, analyze the dump and figure out where is the problem. And then we see the summary of what just happened. Again, uh, jumping straight into the code. So we have this uh, .NET application which is uh, guaranteed to cause a deadlock. So we have uh, two threads, which is executing method A and method B. So we have two locks in these two objects, A and B. In thread one, which is executing method A, we are acquiring lock A and waiting for some time and then trying to acquire B. And in the second thread, we are trying to do the exact reverse. We are trying to get the lock B and we are trying to acquire lock A after sleeping for five seconds. So uh, let's have a quick look at uh, the picture or the diagram of uh, this execution. So this is the summary of what's going to happen. So we have thread one and thread two. We have uh, some code in thread one. And after that, it is trying to acquire lock A. In thread two, there is again some arbitrary code. Then it is trying to acquire lock B. It is obtaining lock B because lock B is not locked. And almost at the same time, lock A is obtained by thread one. Now, after that, thread B is trying to acquire lock A, but that is not happening because lock A is already obtained by thread 1. Now, thread 1 is trying to acquire lock B. That is also not happening because thread 2 has obtained lock B. So, both the, both the threads are not able to progress because it is waiting for locks each other the honor is each other as well so this part of the code which is uh, releasing the locks for example in the case of thread one code to release lock b and code to release lock a is never getting executed similarly in the case of thread two so this is a classic um, guaranteed deadlock scenario and that's what we're gonna debug so uh, back to Visual Studio. So this is the implementation of that particular piece of uh, code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a start without debugging. As I mentioned, um, this application has a deadlocked and it's waiting for each other. Now the operating system has no way to understand that this particular application is in a deadlock. So in this case, unlike uh, in the case of a crash, crash the dump has generated automatically by configuring it. But in this case, we need to manually generate a dump. So uh, the where fault, um, the Windows error reporting is not going to help us. So for that, we are going to use a tool called proc dump. There are so many other ways to generate dump, for example, using WinDebug. Uh, that's what I do normally. Uh, but if you're not very used with WinDebug, uh, I recommend ProcDump to generate a dump. Especially in production, uh, ProcDump can be really helpful because it's a single binary, no installation required, and it generates a very clean, uh, full uh, user dump. So this is the download location for ProcDump from the sysinternal site. 
So I'm going to download it. So I have uh, downloaded the proc dump and I'm going to execute this particular command. So proc dump hyphen MA hyphen MA is required for a full dump, which is what we want in this particular case because we are doing a .NET analysis. .NET uh, dump analysis always required a full user dump, as I mentioned in the previous presentation. After that, we are mentioning the the process ID or the PID. So PID, I got it from the task manager. Uh, you can use any mechanism of your choice to get the PID. Um, in this case, uh, it is 3152. It is uh, giving me the information that there is uh, one dump has written of uh, this much size at this particular location. You can mention any location you want, but uh, I'm, I'm going for the default in this case because my current directory is that. This is the dump uh, which I have uh, generated just now. And uh, just like before, I'm going to drag and drop that dump into the WinDebug. The first command we're going to type is tilde sir so due to the presence of this particular DLL, which is the CLR itself, we know that this is a managed process or .NET process. So we're going to load the managed extension, which is the son of strike. So the command is dot load by SOS core CLR. So this is same as LMVM dot load slash SOS dot DLL. So this is same as dot load by SOS core CLR. So what we are saying is, as I mentioned before in the crash presentation, we are telling the debugger to load the exact same SOS DLL, which is there in the folder, which core CLR is present. Because there is one-to-one -one mapping between SOS and core CLR. The DLs are loaded, the extension DLs are loaded. We can type the command tilde star e bang CLR stack to see the managed stack of all the threads in the process. So we have one, two, three threads which are managed. The rest of the threads are not managed. So let's see what is each thread doing. So in this case, this is a main thread because it has the main function and the main function is executing a read line and Rust is the read line implementation. Looks good. So this is the second thread. Let's see what this thread is doing. It is executing method A and inside method A, it is executing this particular function. This particular function is part of the lock implementation of .NET and it is trying to occur a particular lock. And the third thread is doing pretty similar thing. In the method B, it is trying to enter a lock. We don't know what the lock is at the moment. So next thing we're going to do is because this function is there in the stack we're going to type the command bang sync block hyphen all so what this command does is it's dumping something called sync block in the entire process so this many sync blocks are there so sync blocks are part of the lock implementation in dotnet and in this case two sync blocks are owned by these threads so so these are the thread ids of the owners and this is the object associated with the sync block next thing we want to understand is what these threads are doing owning the lock so for that we need to switch to that particular thread so i type the command tilde tilde square bracket thread id then close square bracket s to switch into that thread um, you can just click on this now what I'm going to do is bang CLR stack so this is the thread which is owning a particular lock and the lock is associated with this particular object now what is this waiting for we know that it is owning this lock now what is it waiting for so for that 
we are going to type the command bang dso so now we are seeing an object which is getting repeatedly on the stack 5f80 here is one here is one here is another one so just to clear our suspicion what we're gonna do is we gonna check if this particular object is there anywhere other than this particular thread stack so i'm going to do a control f search so this is the occurrence on the stack it is the second object which is associated with an awning sync block but the owner is a different thread now what i'm going to do is i'm going to look at what that thread is doing so again i'm switching into that thread commands are same bang clr stack so i got method a it's again waiting for this lock bang dso so in this again i'm seeing an object is getting repeatedly on the top of the stack so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to search for this again now in the sync block command we can see that this object is owned by the first thread so why we are not interested in any other objects just this particular object because one thing is this objects are system objects so for example if this lock was owned by any thread we would have looked at this particular object as well at the end of the day it is little heuristics which makes things easier when it comes to debugging so we have uh, seen this uh, scenario in the dump and we have looked at the analysis. So we have uh, noticed that there was no second chance exception. So we had to collect the dump manually using proc dump. This particular point we have seen in the previous presentation. Uh, dump is a snapshot which we are uh, analyzing using WinDebug dotnet dumps to be analyzed by sos extension and sos extension should match the core CLR version this is the summary of what happened so we have an application which is hung so we know that the application is hung because it's not proceeding it's not doing what it's supposed to do so we have launched a proc dump and the proc dump attached to the application collected a dump and put it into the file which we're gonna analyze unlike last time when the crash happened uh, it is not reporting to the operating system we are manually launching the debugger which is proc dump in this case we have seen uh, this many commands dot load by sos and we have seen dot load then tilde star bang cla stack tilde star k to see all the stacks the command which is special to this presentation is bang a uh, sync block which dumps down all the dotnet managed locks in the process we have seen two locks were on to buy two threads and we have seen what those threads are doing they were in turn waiting each other we have established that fact uh, using the command bang dso uh, we didn't really uh, did a dump object in this, but uh, if you want to see what is inside the sync block, you can do. So this point uh, we have uh, seen before, most of the concept is uh, common to all platform, all uh, programming languages, especially Java. So these are some uh, general tips for hang analysis. We need to understand what each thread are doing, what it is supposed to do, having a lock acquisition on the call stack is not a good sign which means that there is at least contention on the lock if a thread is owning a lock what that thread is doing who is supposed to signal or release the lock etc if someone is owning a lock so these are the general consideration when we do uh, a hang analysis this is even true for uh, kernel analysis uh, kernel memory dump analysis um, the same principle we have used in this presentation as well.
So that uh, brings us to the summary. We have seen a .NET Hang application and we have collected the dump manually using proc dump. We have seen a couple of commands like bang sync block, CLS stack, and establish the deadlock in the dump. That's about the presentation. Now, reviews, comments, and suggestions I would like to take from one single location. So if you don't mind, I would like to follow this particular pattern for the reviews and comments. Unfortunately, it is not really useful to me if you update the YouTube comments as YouTube is just one way we publish content. Now, if you think you need more personal attention or have some in-depth doubt or need some more training, please feel free to follow these links. Also, please refer someone if you think they can benefit from similar trainings. All services are available online as well as direct classroom training. So that's it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.